Fast batch preprocessing is also a powerful and flexible tool. In this video, we'll review some options that allow this tool to adapt to any dataset. We're going to test the tool with an image of the planetary nebula Longmore Triton 5 and the galaxy NGC 4725. The image set contains data in LRGB, O3, and H alpha. In total, there are more than 1,300 subframes, each of 60 megapixels. The data are organized into five observation sessions. Each session contains its own calibration set. To easily load all these images, we go to the Directory button and select the directory where we have the data set. The calibration panel shows us all the images we have and organizes the lights by filter. Since we have several sessions, we are going to configure a keyword that also organizes the data by sessions. This is done by naming the directories with the keyword we want, followed by an underscore and then the associated value, which would be the name we want to give to each of the sessions. In this case, the sessions are simply numbered from 1 to 5. In this field, we enter the keyword and add it. When adding a keyword, the files are organized according to the session to which they belong, both the lights and the calibration frames. By default, the keyword affects the calibration stage. We can configure this keyword to affect the post-calibration or to affect both stages. This is modified with this button, and depending on the option we choose, FBPP reorganizes all the images. The first thing we need to do is check that everything is correct in the calibration panel. Here, for example, we see some warnings. This warning tells us that the exposure time of the dark does not correspond to the exposure time of the light. Let's look at the darks. We have the darks organized by exposure time and by session. Here we have the 120-second darks. In the next session, we find another dark set which, in addition to the 120 second exposures, has also 110.43 second exposures. These exposures are needed for the narrowband flats in H alpha. They are mixed because the exposure tolerance for the darks is 10 seconds. If we decrease this tolerance to 1 second, FBPP automatically separates the two sets of darks. If we go back to the calibration panel, the warnings are gone. These images were acquired with a CMOS camera. To acquire the flats, we set the camera to its minimum gain. Although the camera has more read noise with this gain, the full well is much higher. Therefore, each of the flats contains many more electrons and has a much higher signal-to-noise ratio. Since these flats are acquired at a different gain setting, they need their specific darks and cannot be calibrated with the biases that have been acquired for the lights. Therefore, this automatic association that FBPP establishes between bias and flats is not correct. FBPP organizes it this way because we have darks for the flats of 0.68 and 1 second exposure, but the exposure times of the flats are a little longer and FBPP does not associate these darks with them. This can be modified manually by selecting the set of flats and changing the dark from auto to the corresponding one. Here we can see that this flat is from session 4, so we are going to associate dark number 24 with it. This one is from session 5, and we associate dark 25 with it. This one is from session 2, and we associate dark 22 with it. And so on, with all the flats that need to be reconfigured. Now, all the flats have their correct darks. If we have a camera with overscan, it is advisable to apply overscan correction. 
This is a setting that is somewhat complex to configure, but we can save an FBPP process icon that contains this data. Let's configure the overscan for this camera. FBPP performs an automatic cosmetic correction to correct hot pixels that are eventually not corrected well by the subtraction of the darks. Hot pixels are detected by establishing a limit in sigma units calculated from the dispersion value of the darks. By default, a hot pixel is considered to have a signal in the dark above 10 sigmas. In most cases, this is a good value, but it can be optimized for each camera. This can be done manually using the image calibration tool. Once the optimal value is found, it can be reused in FBPP every time we pre-process images from the same camera. In the post-calibration section, we will activate drizzle and subframe weighing for all the filters. With drizzle active, FBPP will create all the drizzle files on disk. These can be used later to manually integrate the masters again with drizzle integration. Finally, we select the output directory, and run the diagnostics. These warnings tell us that drizzle can significantly increase the execution time of the entire pre-processing pipeline. FBPP has drizzle disabled by default because it is designed to prioritize execution speed. We click on Run, and we see the execution monitor with the entire pipeline. In this dataset, FBPP has a considerable overhead at the beginning of the pipeline because it needs to generate calibration masters for all the imaging sessions. But once that stage is over, the generation of the master lights will run very fast. FBPP takes two hours to pre-process this dataset, but we have to take into account that we have a one-hour overhead due to the drizzle integration. Once FBPP is finished, we can open the masters from the master directory. First, we find all the calibration masters, and then the master lights. Let's open the masters with drizzle. These images contain the master itself and the image with the drizzle weights for each pixel. These maps are merely informative and can be closed. Here we have the six channels. This is the O3 master. We can see that it is posterized, so we activate the 24-bit STF. Here we have the two main galaxies and the planetary nebula. This is the H-alpha master, which also needs a 24-bit stretch. This is the master for B, for G, for R, and L. Finally, we annotate the Blue Master thanks to the automatic astrometric solution generated by FBPP. Thank you.